The first global XP battleship I ground my way up to. The Alabama is one of the oldest BBs in the game. She's still available for global XP despite <laughs> what Wargaming says. Let's go back to 2019 when Alabama was first available. The campaign ships that year, Atlanta in July, Tirpitz in August, Nassau in September, Otago in October, Grimiashi in December, and finally the year ended with the Jambar at the end of 2019. Makes me kind of nostalgic. Yes, a lot has changed, but Alabama has remained the exact same. Is that a bad thing? Well, stick around and you'll find out. Why does no one seem to play this battleship anymore? I think a couple reasons. One, Big Mamie came out a year later in 2020, December. The Massachusetts stole Alabama's Thunder, being essentially the same ship but with the option for fun long range and accurate American secondaries. What's not to love there? And then also tons more battleships became available for global XP over the years. Competition is really, really stiff for GXP at tier seven right now. More American battleships also entered the field. Look at the Tech Tree Kansas. It came out very similar playstyle, but more guns. And battleships like Georgia, Constellation, and Azure Lane, New Jersey mean there are tons of options if you want to play a US battleship. With all that going on, is the Alabama worth playing anymore? Eh, I've got a game for you that uh, could showcase if she is or not. Trap. It's one of my favorite maps for domination. It seems to be usually pretty action-packed, and we got dream matchmaking for Bama, with a few tier 6 ships to beat up on. Currently, we're on Seaside, and there's a double Loyang division in the Cap and a Pobeta up here, and lots of battleships heading this way. Usually this map, that's kind of how it turns out. The ships that spawn at B are facing a certain direction. The red ships usually go to C. The blue ships usually go to A. So, is that a good thing? I don't know. I don't know. I guess if you pointed them directly at the island, <laughs> Would most players just sail directly into the island? Very likely. So maybe this uh, this little decision making that Wargaming has done on behalf of the player base is a good thing. What build am I running? Azur Lane, New Jersey with Iachino and D. Ravel. No flammable cannoneer for me on this one for one really big reason. The guns. They're 406mm guns, yes. But they're Mark VI guns. The muzzle velocity is very, very slow at 701 meters per second. Take a look at Iowa speed comparatively, and then now look at something like Roma. It makes shooting at long ranges pretty hard. Alabama is a sniping battleship, yeah, but her shells fly very slow and shooting at extreme ranges is just too unreliable. With my build, we can already lob shells 17.2 kilometers, and that's as far as you're really going to want to shoot with her. Most people call this a sniper, yeah, I agree, but in this game, mostly we're going to try to be doing middle range fighting, and I think at that, she excels. If you're free to play, Billy Sims will work, of course. The accuracy is good on Alabama. It's actually better than the Massachusetts because her Sigma is 1.9, just edging out Mamie, Iowa, and Georgia. Constellation still takes the cake as the most accurate American battleship at tier seven, with her battle cruiser dispersion. The Alabama really is not far behind and we're gonna showcase it here on some of these battleships and also, uh, you know, showcased it with a blind fire on one of the DDs in C and it, the grouping was great and it allowed us to take them out of the match. So I'll be honest, the guns are awesome but I have had some survivability problems with Alabama. Skill issue? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Fires do seem to be a problem with this ship. You have a little below average HP pool and crappy heals. They bring back less than 9,000 health apiece. It's one of the worst battleship heals at the tier, and you only have three of them. Again, another reason to not take flammable cannoneer. It just isn't worth it. A kiting fire spammer is going to be Alabama's worst nightmare. Because of how slow your shells are, you're going to have a hard time hitting them. Cruisers can dodge these shells at long range really, really easily with minimal effort and not even having to have a hipper build with double rudder and a 0.9 second rudder shift time. <laughs> no, these shells are just so slow that uh, you can dodge them. Her armor, it's okay. It's the classic American all or nothing setup. 
The deck armor being 38 millimeters is one of the upsides. It will shatter 203s. And the other great thing about Alabama is her citadel. Like the Massachusetts, it's hidden below the waterline. It doesn't mean you can't get citadeled. Uh, plunging fire at range can still get down there and cause a lot of damage, so you can't just go broadside. But it's nice at closer range engagements like brawling or trying to do a drive-by. If you have ever tried to drive by a Massachusetts or a Bama, you can't really hit the Citadel. Torp reduction, 49%. That's really the best in class. So it's a good selling point. Destroyers are going to have a hard time dealing damage to Alabama unless they hit her directly on the nose, kind of like the Pobeta did earlier. So the match is shaping up. Those two battleships over on the far side of sea, they're going to keep sailing around. But since we can't do anything about them for now, let's just look towards the middle of the map. And this is one time I'll not complain about our teammates abandoning A, because it's letting the damage sail right to us. These ships pushing in to B, a lot of times you just don't pay attention to all of the angles and all of the places enemies can shoot you from. But Bama can definitely lob B from over here. Vanguard? It's a bold move, Vanguard. So we're going to turn and get all of our guns to bear on this guy for a devastating salvo, we sure hope. Vanguard is... Uh, it's not a battleship that you want to be sitting broadside in, that's for sure. And Alabama proves it with a 40k salvo. Yeesh! My favorite feature of Alabama, and Massachusetts of course, is kind of what we just showcased the amazing turning circle. It turns on a dime in 710 meters. This is about the tightest turning circle that you can get on a tier seven battleship. That plus prop mod, you can be really annoying to hit. Oh, and because these South Dakota battleships are junior mint sized compared to Iowa Vlad and other battleships. Seriously, 660 feet in length, it's like a Miata. And for my European fans out there, that's 200 meters. And for my American fans <laughs> who don't know how long 660 feet is, that's like 30 Chevy Silverados. So there you go. There you go. Of course, the downside of this great turning circle and these little short stubby ships is they're not very fast in a straight line. 27 and a half knots stock. It matters less on small maps like Trap and Trident, which we also played last night while reviewing this ship, but you're going to notice it on bigger maps, and especially if you take gyrating drill bits. It's going to drop your speed down to 25 and a half knots. In this match, we really haven't needed it. It's the perfect example, or you know, the perfect scenario. Everybody's just sailing right to us, and it makes it very easy. If people are kiting and running away, eh, you're going to have less fun in this ship. So. The game's looking pretty good, and there's no reason it should be looking good. With losing A the way we did, Red Team should have just circled around, killed our carrier, and had us all caught in crossfires. But somehow, somehow, it's working out. I guess because the Red Ships are just coming to us one at a time, I suppose? I don't know, but things are looking up, and we're going to back up here and see if we can't finish off the North Carolina. Now the Pobeta in this game, it's a carrier you don't want to see on the enemy team, but really it didn't bully me as bad as some battleships, and that's partially due to Lucky A's great anti-air. Check this out. American battleships are of course undefeated when it comes to shooting down the Flyboys and Jean Bar, of course, because why not go ahead and give that ship cracked AA, am I right? But yes, Alabama has a great anti-aircraft suite. She's really good at shooting planes down. We really only have six in this match right now. That's not a lot, but Pobeta's only dropped us once, I believe. He's been over here on this side of the map, but yes, pretty good AA. Overall, I think Alabama is still great. I don't think she needs a buff or anything like that. I think she's performing as intended. I would say, however, how much fun you have in Alabama will probably depend on the map you play on, what match you get. If you're on a big open map with a lot of spamming cruisers, you're probably going to have less fun. Yes, I think you could learn to aim these shells at longer ranges, but I mean, look at this, 15.7 kilometers or so, and it's over a 10 second shell flight time. So at longer ranges, if you know, if, if a kiting cruiser is shooting you from 17 or 18 kilometers, good luck. 
good luck hitting them with these shells. But if you get some of these small maps, and if you're up-tiered, this ship is still a blast. I would say there's no reason to not play Alabama or to grind towards her with GXP. She's still really great and a lot of fun. And bold statement here, I would still place her above Tirpitz, Odin, Roma, Champagne, and Gascon for GXP picks. Flander Massa Monarch, I would say they're still the top battleships right now for GXP. And unfortunately, I was really on the hunt for the Kraken, but um, we're going to do some bumper cars here for the last bit of this match and unfortunately not pick up any more kills. But that's okay. If you're in the market for a global XP battleship, check out this review on Monarch and the Flander. Both ships are great and a ton of fun right now. And of course, I would love to hear what you guys think of Bama. Um, have some of you guys been playing her nonstop still all these years later? Let me know in the comment section down below. Do me a favor, hit the like button if you liked this video. Be sure to sub so you don't miss any future content. This is Durka signing off. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.